Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And today what I want to show you is something really cool. It's how you can edit video in Adobe Camera Raw. It's a really powerful technique. I'm now using it on my time lapses, so I wanted to share my findings with you. So here is our time lapse, uh, one single frame from that time lapse. And here it is after we've applied Adobe Camera Raw to it. So you can actually use Adobe Camera Raw to fix color corrections, exposure, all kinds of cool stuff. So let's go ahead and jump into this and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So editing a video in Photoshop is really no different than editing, say, a photo. The, th the thing is, a video is a series of still frames that creates those seconds. So there's 24 still frames in a second, or 24 pictures in a second, or 30, or 60. It depends on what setting you have your camera on. But let's say there's 24 frames in a second. Each one of those individual frames is a photo that creates that second. So you can edit those right in Adobe Camera Raw, which is actually a really powerful tool if you're using Photoshop CC. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this file I have here, this folder. In this folder, you're gonna see a series of time lapses. These time lapses were taken with the Sony time lapse app that you can get for your Sony cameras. You go to the Sony Play Store, it's $9.99. It basically turns your camera into an intervalometer, and you can just say, I'm taking a sunset time lapse. I want this to have 400 pictures taken over the course of 10 seconds per image, and then boom, you've got your whole time lapse is created. You just press the button and it does it. It's pretty cool. I've been putting it in this tree that's outside my house. Just to, it looks at the sunset. It's pretty nice. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this right into Photoshop. When you do that, you're going to see that it opens up a timeline down here. If yours does not open up the timeline, when you drag and drop a video in here, go up to window and go to timeline and that will open up the timeline just as well. Normally, when I drag and drop a video into Photoshop, the timeline just appears. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller here so I can see my whole video in this timeline. So in order to use Adobe Camera Raw as a filter, all we have to do is right click on the video in this folder right here, right click right on that video and go to Convert to Smart Object. Now I'm gonna say this again, if you're in Photoshop CC, you can do this. If you're in Photoshop CS6, you will not be able to play this game, okay? In Photoshop CC, you're allowed to use Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. Now, I'm not saying that you can't edit video in CS6, you can do that. But in order to edit a video in Adobe Camera Raw, you have to have Photoshop CC because you can use it as a filter. So for me, this $9.99 is well worth it for that. So now, if you press Control shift a or Command shift a that will open up Adobe Camera Raw as a filter, or you can go to Filter and go right here to Camera Raw Filter. Now we have all the access to our video, just like we would a photo. So I can increase the exposure a little bit, maybe make this a little bit warmer, maybe add a little bit more purple to the sky or a little bit more blue to the sky. It just depends on what I want here. I'll add a little bit more purple to the sky here. I can increase the contrast. I can open up my shadows a little bit. I don't want to do it too much because I'll start to get noise down here, but I'll open up those shadows quite a bit and then maybe drop those highlights a little bit. Kind of do that HDR thing, but we're doing it to a video. Here's our before, here's our after. Look, the color temperature looks better. The overall photo is starting to look better. So if I zoom in down here, you can also see that I'm getting quite a bit of noise and especially color noise right in this area. So I can even go into the detail section here and I can mitigate the noise by reducing that noise a little bit, maybe sharpen this up a little bit as I reduce that noise. But the big kicker is gonna be our color noise. So I can move that color noise slider over so now I don't have any of that color noise in my video. That's awesome. So I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna go right up here to the trees. You can see I have chromatic aberrations here. Well, let me go into my reduction of chromatic aberrations and just bring up the purple amount, bring up the green amount, just like I would a photo. I can do this on a video. I now also have access to HSL sliders, like maybe increasing the uh, saturation or the hue of the red. So I'll increase the hue of the red, maybe increase that saturation so those reds are a little bit more powerful. Do that with my overall oranges too. Maybe make that hue a little bit more on the orange side. You have all kinds of access now to color that you didn't have before when you weren't in Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. So let's just go ahead and press OK on this. And you'll see it, it runs that filter on there. But as you move this over, when I go over to this area, we now have those exact same settings on this area of the time lapse. So let's just go ahead and press play and you'll see how this is operating. It's gonna be a little bit slower because now every frame that it's running, it has to render that 
camera raw filter. So it does take a little bit of time. You might also notice that rendering your video is going to take a little bit more time. So keep that in mind. If you've got a really long time lapse or long video, it might take several more minutes, even more hours in order to develop that. I'm working on the outro to a video right now that's six minutes long that I edited in, in Adobe Camera Raw. I started at 10 o'clock this morning. It's now almost three o'clock in the afternoon. It's almost halfway done. So I'm testing things out. Using Adobe Camera Raw as a filter will add time to the rendering process. So keep that in mind. But let's do this. Let's go to about right here where the color temperature really starts to change in the sky. And let's do something advanced. Let's cut this. So we're now cutting this into two different videos. If you see over here, I've got a video here, I've got a video here. They're butted up against each other in the same timeline, so they're still a part of each other. They'll transition right into the next. You wouldn't even notice there's a cut if you didn't know that I just told you I cut it. So now we can click on this one and we can double click this Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. Maybe with this one, we wanna show a deeper transition of color in the sky. Maybe make it more blue, maybe make it a little bit more magenta, maybe even give it a little more vibrance maybe a little bit more saturation, make this a little bit more dramatic by adding a little bit more clarity to it. We'll go into our whites and really bring out those whites and make this even a little bit darker here. And we'll go ahead and press OK. So now this is going to have a very deep transition from this to this. So what we really need to do here is create a crossfade, because if we don't, what happens is you'll be watching this and it'll go from this to this and then there's no transition in between. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this crossfade. There's a little fader option here. It's like a, a square with a line drawn through it. Go to crossfade. That will allow two things to fade over one another so that they fade and transition into each other. And you can change that duration so it takes them longer to transition or shorter to transition. Let's just make this a total of two seconds. We'll take that crossfade and we'll drag and drop it right on top of there. So now these two are going to crossfade into one another. So as you watch this, you won't necessarily notice the transition that's happening between the colors. It'll be happening, but it happens more on a gradual scale rather than uh, just an abrupt change in your time lapse. So at this point, we're pretty much done with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to render this video. I'm going to go down here to this option right here, this little arrow at the bottom of your timeline. So you can also go up to file and go right down here to where it says export and then render video. Whether you click here or you click here, the same thing's gonna happen. So we're gonna call this new time lapse. When we go through these settings here, I want this to be saved to the desktop. H.264, that's the good encoding that you want here. High quality, definitely make that high quality because otherwise you're gonna be sacrificing quality uh, in your video that you want to look good. Document size, 1920 by 1080, because that's what it was. And the document frame rate was about 24 frames per second. So all of this looks pretty good. We're not gonna worry about the range or, or the render options. We're just gonna go ahead and press render. Once this is done rendering, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the rendered video and then I'm gonna show you a before and after with a, with a mask over top of it. So you can see what that time-lapse looks like before our editing and what it looks like after our editing. And you're gonna be pretty shocked by those results. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. What we talked about today was how to use Adobe Camera Raw as a filter, how to use that timeline so that you can control your videos in Photoshop. Pretty cool trick if you've never done video in Photoshop. We covered how you could use Adobe Camera Raw not only to maybe modify tone and color, but also to uh, reduce color noise in video and also chromatic aberrations really awesome technique. So go ahead and try this on some of your videos. If you like this, please comment, share, maybe tell us how you use Adobe Camera Raw or Photoshop to edit videos. We could all learn from each other here. Also subscribe. If you subscribe to the channel, every time I put out a new video, which is usually every Friday, you'll get an email sent to your inbox right away before even I get to you. that will say, Hey, everyday HDR has something new on YouTube. Thank you for taking the time to watch this.